welcome to AF Math and Engineering. If you're enjoying this video on our channel, please hit the like button and the subscribe button down below. Enjoy the video. Hey everyone, welcome back. Fred here from AF Math and Engineering. Uh, this video is going to be on compound stress. So the idea behind this, and as you can see on the diagram, this is the question that we're going to be solving on the right, um, is that we have, we're going to try and find kind of the net stress at the base of this post um, due to both the axial loads and the moments caused by those axial loads uh, and their eccentricities and the lateral load. So that's like we're going to combine all of those things together and we're going to convert all of those into normal stresses and we're going to draw a diagram. So a pretty simple question, pretty straightforward, something you'll see probably in second year uh, civil engineering. Um, so let's let's take a look. Okay, so um, first before we start this question, as you can see on the right, we have two axial forces. We have a 500 kilonewton and an 800 kilonewton axial load and those have eccentricities. So those are also causing um, you know, uneven kind of uh, normal stresses at the base, and we have a 600 kilonewton lateral force. Okay, and we're asked to determine the normal stress distribution on the transverse section at the base, um, at the corners um, of the rectangular post, draw the stress distribution here, and that's what we're asked, and we're asked to show the line of zero stress. So, um, pretty straightforward. Now, first thing is we need to kind of write down our assumptions and our formulas that we're going to use for this. And then we're going to break it down. So first of all, we need to define our kind of um, our sign conventions. So let's define our sign conventions first for positive directions in both axes. So we're going to assume kind of a axes here. We'll call this x, and these will be z. Okay. So we'll call that the z axes, and this is kind of looking down at the top of the post. Okay. So um, for moments um, that are acting on the top here, okay, we're going to say that in the x direction that this is positive and in the z direction okay we're going to say that this is the positive direction so these are kind of our positive sign conventions for bending so we'll come back to that um, it's best in these kind of questions where you have like multiple directions in three dimensions is don't say counterclockwise or clockwise and just do it in your head like write it out like this and show which side is kind of this this will be for example tension and this is compression okay so this is compression and this is tension okay so that's good to know. So uh, what else do we need? Well, we need our formulas. So we know that the, the formula for normal stress, okay, is P divided by A, okay? We also know that the stress, so we'll say that's normal, okay? And this is also normal, we'll say it's due to a moment, okay? Uh, the stress due to a moment is M, uh, Y, where Y or C, you sometimes see it as, divided by I. So Y is the distance from the centroid to where you want to evaluate the stress due to the moment and I is the moment of inertia in that direction. So we're, we're going to use both of these, okay? And let me just uh, draw you something quick here. So what this formula is here, essentially if we have some, for example, okay, if we have some uh, force here, for example, P at some eccentricity E from the centroid of the shape, uh, what's gonna happen here is it's gonna create a moment, okay? And this moment is going to cause well, it's going to cause a compression here, and it's going to cause a tension like this, okay? So it's going to cause this to pull up and this side to push down. So that's kind of the idea behind this, and this is the stress um, at that location, at that location Y from the NA. So these are the formulas that we're going to use, and as well, um, we're going to say in this question that our compression is negative and tension is positive. So I know this is taking a little bit to do our assumptions and go through it, but we need to kind of define what's going on. As well, let's number our forces and label them. So the 800 kilonewton on the right here, this is, um, that's going to be P1, okay? P2, we'll say is the 500 kilonewton axial force. And we'll say that the horizontal force of 600 kilonewton is our uh, H1. We'll call that H1, the horizontal force. So we've labeled our forces so we don't get confused. Now let's find the area. So the area is pretty simply just, um, and we'll do everything in meters. Um, so let's find the area. So it's going to be 0 0.8 times 0 0.15. Okay. So the total area is 0 0.12 meters squared. Okay. So what we're doing is we're kind of finding everything that we need, all of our constants. We're getting organized so that when we go to approach the question, we have everything done. And next, um, let's find our, our moment of inertia. So we're going to need moment of inertia in X and Z. So let's find it in X first. Okay, so about the X axis, okay, the bending is... Um, when it's about the x, but about the x-axis, our height is going to be 0 0.15, and our base is going to be 0 0.8. So let's say we have 0 0.8 times 0 0.15 to the third over 12, 
Okay, this is simply just 2.25 times 10 to the negative 4 meters to the fourth. And in the z direction, if we take a look at the diagram on the right, uh, in the z direction, 800 is our height and 0.15 is our base. And uh, that gives our moment of inertia of 6.4 times 10 to the negative 3 meters to the fourth. Cool. So these quantities here are important. Uh, they're all important, but those are the most important because we're going to use those in the next step. So, okay, now how do we approach this question? Well, the first thing to do is to break it up into different cases. So the way I like to do it is I like to do it force by force. I like to sketch it and I like to draw kind of the moments that are acting as a result and the axial force that are acting as a result of each individual force. So let's start with the 800 kilonewton force. So I'm just going to write case one here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sketch kind of a kind of a large cross section of the top of the the post here okay so on top of our post we have we have our x direction here and our z direction here and we have our 800 kilonewton force as we can see on the right it's acting right in the corner here it's acting right in the corner okay so uh, what are the eccentricities from this force to our neutral axis because as you know it's a square so the neutral axis uh, is just the halfway point so if this dimension is 800, so this is going to be 400 millimeters, okay, in this direction, and in this direction, okay, we're going to have 150 divided by 2, so that's going to be uh, 75 millimeters. Cool. So we have, uh, because, uh, so let's take a look at what the moments um, are caused. So the axial forces, we're going to draw a table after, we're going to put all the axial forces in at once, it's quite easy. Let's just focus on doing the moments here. So for the moment, uh, 800 kilonewton acting about the z-axis, simply just 800 times the distance to the z-axis. So that's going to cause a moment in this direction. Okay, and we're gonna say that's mz. And in this direction, it's also going to cause a moment like this. Okay, that's going to be mx. Cool, so as you can see, I know it's a little bit hard to draw, but we have a moment in this direction, and we have a moment in this direction. And the magnitudes of these, so we uh, for mz, the magnitude of mz is simply just going to be 800 uh, kilonewton times our 400 millimeter. We'll work out the correct units, obviously. So right below, we'll just say for this one, we'll say mz1, because this is p1 that we're using, is going to be 800. And let's do everything in um, kilonewton meter. So we're going to do 800 times uh, 0.4. And what direction is this? Well, our sign convention is positive for this direction, so we're gonna say that's positive. Okay, this is gonna be 320 kilonewton meter, and mx1 is equal to, so 800 times 0 0.075, because remember we're doing it in meters, and that's simply 60 kilonewton meter. Let's take a look at our sign convention. It is in the positive uh, x direction. So that is going to be positive. So they're both positive, so that's good. So we found the moments here. So what we're gonna do is for each force, we're gonna find the moment in X and the moment in Z that are associated with those. And then we're gonna sum them all up in a table, include the axial force, and we'll draw the distribution. So let's go to case two. For case two, we're gonna look at the 500 kilonewton force. So as we can see, the 500 kilonewton force is located just over here. Okay, and I'm just gonna draw kind of a line to it so I don't get cluttered. Okay, so that's 500 kilonewton. And the distance to the z-axis uh, is given, uh, this, this distance is given actually as, as 140. So it's just 140 minus uh, 400. So that's gonna be 260 millimeter. And we need this distance as well. Okay, this distance here, the distance from the 500 to the uh, axis is just gonna be um, 75 minus 35, because they're trying to trick us here. They're trying to give us this distance, but we need the one to the neutral axis. So that's done. And same, same thing, um, we're just going to go ahead and calculate the moments. So we're gonna find mz2. Okay, so this force, 500 kilonewton, about the z axis, is going to be in this direction, as we can see. So we have this one here, which is mz, okay? And we have a moment about the x-axis, which is, and I'm just gonna kind of draw it. I know this is getting a little bit cluttered. I hope you can see this. So this is mx here. So um, we have this negative 500 in the z direction. So we're looking at this direction here, okay? So we have 500 kilonewton, and that's gonna be times um, 0.26. 
It's in the, it's in the negative direction according to our sign conventions. It's in the opposite direction. Okay, so that's simply just going to be negative 130 kilonewton meter. Let's take a look at x. So x, we have 500 times this 0 0.04. Again, it's opposite of our sign convention. And that's going to give us negative 20 kilonewton meter. Okay, let's move on finally, and let's do the final case, which is our horizontal. So this was P1, this is P2. Let's do case three. Okay, so finally for case three, we have this horizontal force here. Okay, and as we can see, the horizontal force is acting straight um, in the neutral axis vertically, like this. Okay, okay, but its height was actually. Um, and let's take a look at the right because this is actually the confusing part. The height it's, is given at three, 350, but what we're looking at is the height at, from the base because the base is where the stress is being developed. So we want to subtract the height uh, from 350 to get the actual distance of where we're evaluating here. So that, that's a very common trick. So um, this force here is causing a moment in the x direction. Okay. And it's simply going to be 600 times, like we said, 1,000 minus 350, so that's going to be 650, okay? And if we take a look, it's the same as our sign convention, so it's positive, so we have 390 kilonewton meter. Cool. So, what's next? Well, for next, we're just going to go ahead and draw a table, and we're going to calculate all the forces at the corners, uh, A, B, C, and D. So what we're going to do is we're just going to calculate uh, the stresses at the corners. We're going to sum them, and um, we're going to draw the diagram. So pretty straightforward. What's our P over A? Well, our P over A is the sum of all of the axial loads divided by the total area. So it's going to be the same at each corner of the, the post. So we have 800 and 500 is our P1 and P2, so that's going to be 1,300. We said compression is negative, so we're going to say 1,300 divided by our area. We found our area to be 0 0.12. Okay, This is going to give us... And we're going to do everything in MPA. So we have 10.8 MPA. Negative. Okay. So let's just go ahead. It's going to be the same for each one. I won't write the units because we're running out of time here. Now for this uh, formula here, we were given, remember the formula, which was MY over I. Okay. So we're, we're going to kind of take a look at uh, point A for um, sigma X. So sigma X, as we found was okay is going to be the sum of all of the x's so we had sorry, our total mx uh, is going to be 60 minus 20 plus 390 so we're going to have 60 minus 20 plus 390 okay that's going to give us 430 kilonewton meter okay so what what that means is it's positive in our sign convention what that means is that um, these points here d and c are in compression and a and b are in tension so right off the bat we know a b are in tension, so we can write positive for those, okay, and negative for these, okay. So um, that's important to note. And now we can go ahead and calculate out our uh, my over i. So we have m, it's 430 kilonewton meter. Y is the distance, and uh, this is a little bit of a trick as well. So we're calculating in the x direction. So our uh, y is going to be kind of half the dimension of in the z direction. Okay, so that's something that some people sometimes make a mistake with. Okay, so it's going to be 0 0.075. That's divided by Ix, okay? So Ix uh, is simply just going to be 2.25 times 10 to the negative 4. And this is going to give us a value of 143.3 MPa. Okay, that's positive. Same, and we're just going to carry that down. Cool. Same with this, okay, um, in, in the z direction we have um, the sum of our moments is simply just going to be 320 minus 130 and nothing else. So all we have is 190. Okay, so we have 190 times, and then this is going to be half the x direction. So for 800 divided by 2, so that's going to be 0 0.4 divided by the moment of inertia in Z. So 6.4 times 10 to the negative three. And that's going to give us a value of 11.875. So as we can see, our MZ is also positive. This is positive. So that means that these two are in tension and these two are in compression. Excellent. So there we go. We have tension and uh, compression. So these correspond with points A and D and these C and B. So let's go ahead and say A and C, A and D are tension, and these are negative.
Now the total, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to sum this row. And we're going to take into account, obviously, our sign convention. So we have negative 10.8 plus 143 plus 11. That's going to be 144. Okay, MPA. And this is going to be negative 10 plus 143 minus 11. That's going to be 120 at point B. And these are... Okay, these are uh, in tension. So A and B are in net tension after all of the forces are being considered. C is going to be, and D are going to be compression. And those are simply going to be summing the rows. We have 166 and 142. Cool, so now we have the stresses at these points and this is compression, this is tension, and this is compression. Now we can go ahead and draw our diagram. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw the normal stress distribution on the base. So let's just start by kind of drawing the base here. Leave yourself kind of enough of an angle here so that we can show this stress distribution. Okay, let's label this as A, B, C, and D. And at A, let's just label our forces. So below, we're going to write our tension values. And at the top, we're going to write our compression values, and we're going to put them above. Okay, that's 166 and 142. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to kind of draw this normal stress distribution here. So we have this distribution here. Okay, and so this is uh, compression up here. So we're going to, this is going to be acting downwards and this is going to be acting up, okay? And similarly, we're going to do that for part BC. And the point of zero stress, and this is just simply connected here. So this is stress going in this direction. And our line of zero stress is just simply a line connecting these two. And if you're asked to find or the distance, you can just use similar triangles using these values. Okay, so I know that was a little bit of a longer video, guys, but uh, I just kind of wanted to explain that step by step. I hope you understood what was going on in this question, and um, I hope you liked the video. Uh, stay tuned for more. Uh, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and uh, thanks for watching.